Uncle Jesse here. This is the Elegoo Saturn II. It's an 8K resolution resin 3D printer, and this is some brand new 8K resin specifically designed to help bring out all the amazing details that this machine can produce. So let's get some things 3D printed and see what it can, oh no, that's not right. So clearly my prints did not turn out the way that I was expecting them to while working with this new 8K resin from Elegoo. And I figured I'd walk you through some of the steps of how I'm gonna resolve this and some of the challenges that you might run into while working with a brand new resin like this 8K resolution resin here. But one thing that I immediately noticed when working with this resin compared to your standard ABS-like resin is that it's a good bit thicker. It's almost like a thicker, milky, uh, pancake batter almost like consistency with this resin, which is more than likely gonna impact your profile settings while working with it. It's also a good bit darker in pigment than the other resins that I'm used to working with, which also lends itself to, at least for me, some added complexities to working with darker pigmented resins, especially like a jet black resin. It's like a 50-50 crapshoot for me of getting those to print properly and just really having a hard time dialing in those settings. I think I'll do a follow-up video at some point here really going through that specific process of trying to dial in working with black resin. And typically when I get started working with a new resin, I like to run one of the exposure finder tests that you can run on your different resin 3D printers. And I'll typically start with a default profile that I have, or if a profile is available for me to start with. So I ended up starting with one of my default profiles that I have for the Saturn II, and it was not able to print properly at all. So I immediately jumped on the Elegoo Facebook group, and thankfully uh, some of you amazing users out there had already been working with this resin and were providing some feedback on the settings that you went with. So I saw that I was printing mine way too fast, so I decided to copy some of those settings and slow things down and rerun my exposure tests. Uh, the other thing that they had mentioned that I think makes a lot of sense is if you're working with an 8K resolution resin 3D printer and you're trying to print with some of this deta finely detailed 8K resin here, you're gonna wanna print at a lower resolution. And I typically print almost everything at 0.5 millimeter layer height. So I decided to drop it down to 0.03 millimeter layer height, which is gonna provide some really crisp details for us to observe. So I went off and ran some of those exposure settings again at 2.5 seconds as well as two seconds. And both of the results honestly look absolutely amazing. And these actually might be some of the best exposure tests that I've ever run and seen off of a machine before. So I decided to print this at two second exposure time with those same settings. And what I think is gonna be the issue here is this print itself, uh, obviously the front does not look good, but the back looks really good. And this, like the head on the back here looks fantastic. So I don't think I'm gonna need to reprint that. So we're gonna get it off the build plate and check it out in a little bit more details here. And then the back of this bust also looks really good. It's the front portion that just really did not print properly. So I think it might be one or two issues that we're looking at with this. One, either my build plate wasn't entirely level, so I'm gonna go through the process of re-leveling this. And two, I believe my bottom exposure settings were just too low for this resin. This resin is so squishy once it's printed. I, It's like the oddest thing. It's very, very soft compared to other resins. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna imagine it's gonna really stiffen up once you cure it, but the actual uncured printed piece here is very soft and kind of squishy compared to your other three prints. So I'm thinking my bottom exposure, instead of a 25 second bottom exposure, I should bump this up to 30 or even 35. And I also wanted to mention, if you're gonna be printing at 0.03 millimeter layer height, you're gonna be adding a lot more layers that need to be processed on your 3D printer, which means it's gonna take your slicer longer to generate generate all of those layer slices, and the file size is going to be drastically larger than what you might be familiar with. So instead of being around 600 to 700 megabytes for this particular file, it was almost one gig in size. And here's the results of our Magneto bust printed with this 8K resin on the Elgoo Saturn II. Unfortunately, I did have a few failed supports there in the front, but it doesn't really look like it impacted the print quality overall. Unfortunately, it does look like there is 
a line that developed on the helmet, which I could more than likely just sand smooth, but I think I'm gonna end up trying to resupport this and print it again. Yeah, these failed support pieces are just popping right off. So no real damage to the print, thankfully. They're really, look at this, uh, these supports, look how flexible I can almost, Okay, yeah, I can bend these completely in half. So here's some supports that I just removed from the print and to give you an idea of how flexible this resin is before you run off and cure it, I can, look at, I can bend these, I can basically squish them together and they're not snapping or anything like that. They're really, it's extremely flexible before it's cured. So here's the supports after curing them here. Yeah, much, much more brittle than <laughs> before they were cured, but still pretty impressive to see how flexible those were prior to curing. I also recently purchased one of these electronic air guns, which come to find out is absolutely perfect for helping dry off my 3D prints before going to cure them. I ended up buying this for cleaning things around the studio instead of using those air cans that I just blow through very quickly. This thing is rechargeable and I'm loving it. I also needed to print the base that goes with this Magneto bus, so I printed it on my Elgu Neptune 3 with this purple rainbow-like metallic PLA. I figured it was the perfect color combination for this print. And this looks absolutely awesome. I am so happy with the results that I got with printing with this 8K resin on the Saturn II. The details are super crisp and clear on this. Again, printed it at 0.03 millimeter layer height with this 8K resin on this 8K resin 3D printer. And the details are like unreal how clean everything is on this 3D print. And I'm still on the fence if I'm gonna reprint the helmet or not. I honestly think with just a very small amount of sanding, I'll be able to take care of that one layer line that uh, appears directly through the middle of the helmet. But getting in really close, all of the details on the face of Magneto is just, I mean, you can see all of those individual pores clearly. I also wanted to see how this 8K resin would print on a non 8K resolution resin 3 printer. So I went off and printed another set of files from Draftier Studios here on the Elegoo Mars 3, which is a 6K resolution resin 3 printer. And I printed this at 0.03 millimeter layer height like I did on the Saturn 2. And again, this print just looks absolutely stunning. Details are so nice with this resin. I think it is because it's that slightly darker gray that helps everything. All those little details really pop and uh, just look so much clearer than your standard resins that you might be printing with. I also want to say a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of this amazing mid-size 8K resolution Elgu Saturn II resin 3D printer. They're also the makers of the Mars series of machines, including the Elgu Mars 3, which just so happens to be one of my absolute favorite resin 3D printers. And if you're interested in more information about their 8K resin, I'll have links to that down below as well. A big thank you again to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. And is the 8K resin really worth it when printing with something like the Elegoo Saturn II? I honestly think it might be. And if you have this printer, I would definitely give it a shot. You're obviously gonna need to print things a lot slower and at a higher resolution if you really wanna get the most out of this resin. But I am insanely happy with the results that I got with printing with this resin on the Saturn II. And heck, even the print off of the Elegoo Mars III Three looks really impressive. Also have links to Draftier Studios Patreon where you can find these files in the month of September. So happy that he made a Magneto bust. I wanna say it was specifically for me asking repeatedly for like the last six months, but uh, I'll leave it up to them to clarify. I also wanted to take a moment to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my Resin 3 printer settings, uh, including the settings that I used for the 8K resin here on the Saturn 2, I'll be updating my Patreon with my Saturn 2 profiles here. And have you tried any of this 8K resin for yourself? Let me know what kind of results you're seeing down below and if you think it's worth it over your standard resin that you can pick up for your 3D printers. Hey, thanks again for watching you all and I'll see you next time.